This video is sponsored by Squarespace. We'll hear more on that later. Hi friends, my name is Al or Lil Star Nerd. Welcome to today's video. Before we get started, um, thank you to my patrons. Your names are on screen. Please check out my Patreon if you haven't already. It's really fun over there. We do really cool stuff. Go check it out. I was gonna say that today we're doing something a little different, but that's a lie. We never do anything different. We're doing exactly what you'd expect me to do, which is we're drawing in my sketchbook. Today, we are hopefully filling a spread, maybe maybe more, but I have a feeling it's just gonna be a spread in my sketchbook. I'm actually really excited for this video for multiple reasons. As I recently talked about in my um, art goals check-in video, I really wanna dedicate some time the rest of this year to character design. It was one of my like art resolutions for this year and I haven't really done it and it's just something that I find really fun and interesting, so I wanna do it. I enjoy doing it, I wanna do it. But I, I struggle with doing it. I really struggle to convince myself to do it, to find, you know, the inspiration, the prompts. So I came up with a little challenge for myself. This is partly inspired by Prickly Alpaca. I love her like character design videos. She always has some sort of cool challenge or prompt that she uses. I really love when she has people send her like an object and she makes a character out of that object. So this is kind of inspired by that. But it's also based off of a thing that I did a couple of years ago. And there's no way I came up with this because I'm not creative, but I also don't remember literally anyone else doing it. But like realistically, it must have been a trend on Instagram. But basically back in the day, I did this thing with a, an art friend where I and they, we both created a pin board of about 15-ish pins and then we swapped them and had to make a character based off of that Pinterest board. So that's what we're doing. I had you guys create Pinterest boards for me of like 10 to 15-ish pins and I'm going to look at them and make a character based off of them. I got way, way more responses than I really expected. I got quite a few, and as long as you don't delete them, I'll be saving them for later because obviously I can't get to all of them today. And also like huge thanks for taking the time to make those. It is so exciting and cool and I'm, I'm just really grateful. But yeah, unfortunately I couldn't get to all of them today. I've picked out I think five or six, but I'll probably realistically only get to four. If that, I really am not sure. I tried to narrow it down to just the things that really, really, really spoke to me and not even things that I had pre-existing ideas for, just like things like boards that like I really liked um, because I really want to challenge myself here. So we'll talk about that later, but I, I, it was really hard to narrow it down, but eventually I got, I got it down to a few. I always say this, but this time it's never been more true. And that is that my expectations going into this are low and I want to lower yours a bit too. This is just not my strong suit, um, especially because it'll be a little bit more stylized. I'm not used to doing that kind of work lately. It's, it's probably going to be a little rough. I'm really not expecting to come out of this with masterpieces, with a beautifully finished spread. Um, I'm just excited to do it, to have fun doing it. So, you know, prepare yourself for like a, a uh, underwhelming spread. I think it'll be fun and cool, but like, will they be good? I don't know, the drawings might suck. And that's okay, you know, that's the kind of the point of this is getting better at a skill that I'm weak in. So it's okay if it's bad, but I kind of hope they're not because I'm really, really excited about the boards that I've picked. I have a few ideas, like I've been working on them just so I could get right into doing them in this video rather than like having 20 minutes of me like fuddling around not knowing what to do. So I've got ideas planned out. We're gonna get right into drawing these characters. Let's go. Let's, let's go fill a spread. <laughs> So let me start off by saying that I actually did not end up doing four characters. I only did three. I had a fourth one that I was really, really excited about, but when I held it up to the other four ideas I had, you know, the thumbnails I had done, there was a clear difference in how fleshed out it was. And I really loved that board. It really, really spoke to me. So I didn't want to waste it on an idea that had barely been fleshed out, especially when it would be next to three other ideas that had a lot more detail. So I'm saving it for later. I still like the idea but it's not quite baked yet. <laughs> um, but that does mean that there's a random blank space in this spread. When picking these boards, I picked solely on whether or not they like resonated artistically and creatively with me in that moment. And a lot of people came up with the board either for their existing OC or they had sent it with a description of the character it was about, like a full life and physical description, you know, everything. And if you did, that's totally fine. There's no problem with that. But I tried to completely and fully disregard regard any of that information because for me the point of this challenge was to do that myself it was to fully come up with a person a character come up with not only their design what they looked like but you know their story as well and their their world as well so please don't be offended if i did pick your board and i i totally ignored like what you told me to do um just because that was like kind of not the point of this challenge for me anyways let's get into this first character 
This character is based off the board sent in by Rebecca Wittrup, which had a definitive space cowboy vibe. The second I saw it, I was like, yes, like a thousand percent, yes, I need to do this. Like talk about resonating, like I was obsessed. I will say this board was a nice, easy start, which was great and probably a small part of the reason I was so attracted to it. Rebecca did a really thorough job. There's basic character description, a basic setting description, a basic outfit description, and even some personality description thrown in there. There was also a pretty great color palette amongst the pins, obviously the orange spacesuit, the brown skin, that nice retro bluey green sky. Designing the character was pretty easy. Obviously, he needed a cowboy hat. Great starting point. <laughs> I also wanted to include the like classic bandana covering his nose and mouth, which translated into the breathing apparatus, which I think worked out really nicely. At that point, I knew I wanted a pretty much 50-50 split of cowboy to astronaut. I went top down from hat to breathing apparatus to his top, which I knew would essentially be a spacesuit vest. It's pretty classic and typical, nothing crazy. I tried to keep detail and design in mind and do more than just make it a giant block of gray. So I added seams and buttons and straps, but I think it's still a little bland. He's got fingerless gloves for the rebel cowboy look and a gun holster on his hip. The pants took a bit more thought. I was kind of struggling for what I wanted to do. And then I was like, oh my God, <laughs> chaps, obviously. So of course, you know, I had to include the chaps, but literal leather chaps felt a little too, I don't know, not right. It didn't fit. So I combined them with the pants of spacesuits with like that bagginess and, and knee pads, and then a nod to cowboy boots, including spurs. I don't think it's the most creative design. Like it feels pretty obvious afterwards. Like, you know, I don't think I've invented anything new here, but for what I'm used to doing, this feels super cool and just like way beyond what I'm used to expecting of myself. So I'm super thrilled. I love the way the design came out and I love the color palette. So let's talk about the character himself and his world and story because that is also part of this challenge. This part is loosely based on the board, but of course, once the ball gets started rolling, there's no telling where it will go. I see this character as probably low 20s, and he's never really had a family because of the nature of the society he lives in, which, okay, actually, let's start with, with that society. I, th I think that'll make more sense. Um, <laughs> I think he lives on Mars or a futuristic version of Mars in which it's pretty hospitable for humans. This is a few centuries down the line after humans have colonized Mars and a full new world and society has been constructed there or is at least in the founding stages. So this character was born and raised on Mars. The fashion is obviously heavily influenced by the NASA suits that originally populated the planet as scientists and professionals were just starting work there. It wouldn't be necessarily uncommon to find a skeletal remain in a nasty old astronaut suit out in the harsh, unlivable areas of Mars if you're brave enough to get out there. Slowly as humans somehow magically acclimated and you know climate change maybe made Mars more livable, humans were able to go without so much protection. And now the suits are mostly just part of the fashion. Of course, there are still some important things that one should always have on them if they plan on going out, especially if they'll be taking any long trip such as a breathing apparatus or carbon dioxide converter. Fashion is also influenced by what weirdly remains of earth culture, kind of like the weird stereotypical stuff that they look back on and are like, wow, humans are so cool and quirky for wearing that. That must be what they wore literally all the time. Like how we do now with like poodle skirts. This character happens to live in an area where some of the earlier colonizers thought the wild west was like super cool. So anyways, this character is young and probably grew up in some sort of like group home, school work situation. I'd imagine that in this society, family is far less important as the society is still kind of settling. Maybe people have to go from one place to another. Maybe people don't survive very long if they're not evolutionarily primed for the atmosphere yet. So I think he grew up with a lot of other kids, probably with not much supervision. So he was out a lot. He knows the lay of the land, knows every nook and cranny, etc., etc. As he grows up, he's still got a lot of that goofy, wacky energy, but now that he's out of that home, he's hit with the reality check that he's got to start living his life in a world that is really struggling and isn't sure of its purpose, and he kind of reflects those same ideas. Before we move on to the next character, I would like to take a moment to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you are a creative or a small business owner, Squarespace is the place to create a professional and awesome and cool website. Not only is it gonna look great no matter pretty much 
what you do, but also it's super easy to make. When designing your website, Squarespace has a bunch of templates available to you. So no matter what you're doing, you're gonna find something that works for you. And that template is customizable. So if it's not exactly what you're looking for, you can change out features, add stuff. So no matter what, you're representing yourself. Not only are there templates, but you can also use Fluid Engine, which is a next generation website design system from Squarespace. We talked about the templates being customizable, but with Fluid Engine, you can take anything and drag and drop it anywhere on your page, and it's gonna work out perfectly. I used it, it's amazing. You can also include your online store in Squarespace, so instead of having like a bunch of different websites where you have like your shop and this and that, your portfolio, you can have it all in one place. So no matter what you're selling, whether it's physical products, digital products, or some sort of service, you can put that on Squarespace, it's got your back. No matter what you need, whether it's a portfolio, an FAQ, a shop, whatever, Squarespace has got your back. I'm super indecisive and I'm not quite done with my website, but I'm having so much fun like using Squarespace to just make it come alive. So it's, it's been awesome. If you're interested, you can go check it out. Go to squarespace.com slash to save 10% off your first purchase or domain with code lilstarnerd. I can't wait to see what you guys create with Squarespace. Now let's get back into the art. Sorry, my, my mic cut out. <laughs> now, character number two. This is based off the board sent in by Clown. Thank you, Clown. I saw this and again, it just absolutely spoke to me. This one was far less obvious as to the story, but all the pins gave off this really distinctive vibe. Like I could feel the story and the character, even if it wasn't literally spelled out for me, or the pins were a little bit more all over the place, like I still absolutely got it. My main draw was the pin of the robot legs. I've literally been thinking about like Android AUs and wanting to create some sort of Android character. And you know, then I saw those and I was like, hell yes. The board has a definite vintage vibe going as well as something super delicate and fragile going on with maybe a bit of a darker edge or undertone. There were a few pins in there that felt incredibly random and didn't necessarily feel like they fit the vibe, which were great indicators for who the character or story were, like the Dilf Magnet shirt pin. These were honestly integral to coming up with the story. The story and character honestly will do a lot of explaining for the design choices, so we're going to start there. Like I said, I knew I wanted this to be an Android character. The story just kind of like came to me after looking at the pens, so I can't fully explain like the why behind everything, but basically she's an Android and maybe like an alternate version of the 40s-ish or a far off retro future. She's a bot designed to be an escort. She exists to be arm candy, to entertain rich men, maybe some women, I don't know. Uh, she sleeps with the men, she dances. She specifically is known for her ballet dances. She would be quote unquote employed at a dance studio where she and other bots designed for the same purpose and humans who do the same work put on beautiful ballet and dance performances for rich families and couples and the unloyal men can find them in their quote unquote dressing rooms after the show for further entertainment. For some reason, probably something similar to the plot of Detroit Become Human because I'm too lazy to come up with something myself, the androids start becoming sentient. This android is one of them and she slowly comes to learn what her lot in life actually means. She's awakened to her own sexuality, which is gay, <laughs> but she keeps on with her duties and pretends nothing has changed. She falls in love, perhaps with a human dancer at that same studio and sneaks around with her as she slowly discovers who she is. But during work hours, she uses her advanced android intellect to manipulate her rich patrons to one day earn her freedom and help others less privileged. As for her design, a lot of it was based off old Hollywood glamour. Originally her dress was plain, but there was a pretty poignant theme of feathers in the board. So I included those on her dress and in her hair. It's not super obvious in the drawing, but I picture her face, like a lot of her face would just be mostly painted on. Because this is retro futurism, the technology, while obviously advanced enough to create, you know, really advanced AI, often looks a bit clunky or obvious. Her face has obvious plates that move for her to be able to talk. And while her eyes are real, you know, they're an odd glowing blue, her eyelashes, lips, and blush are all very 2D, just painted on. Her hair is also a solid, smooth, and shiny mass <laughs> rather than actual hair. Her body similarly is covered in plates. I love the idea of certain parts of her body being removable, optional, or replaceable, like a patron could essentially customize her body for the night. I also think that would be a great storytelling feature as she gains sentience and eventually autonomy. She would literally get to choose her body and how she presents herself. And the last character. This one was based off the board by Bridget Evie, Eve? 
I don't know. This board is titled Fortune Teller, and while I was trying to avoid any direction from the board creators, this one definitely had to be a fortune teller. This board was a bit harder for me to interpret. Although I totally resonated with it, I had a hard time piecing it all together. I wanted to include a lot of that dark, gothic, classic Hollywood vibe in terms of costume and look, but also wanted to make sure there was a bit of circus performer thrown in as well. I also really wanted to be careful about getting too close to a harmful Romani stereotype, so I stayed clear of it entirely and, you know, instead of like trying to like toe any lines. I did do some research, which was really fun, um, but I, I really didn't know how to represent anything that wouldn't be harmful. This board felt like a lot of drama, a lot of emotion, a feeling of a woman as a pinned down display butterfly. It felt magical and powerful, but also watched and caged. It felt magical and powerful, but also like watched and caged. It was really hard to fully capture that, but I tried my best. For her design, I went with a dark color palette, mainly black and white like an old film with a hint of purple. This is a character that probably would have been better to do digitally because pretty much all of the details are lost in this drawing. I wanted her to be covered in these beautiful like gem and glass bugs and beetles along her bodice and belt. They're there, you just can't really see them. She has an old Hollywood performer type costume with the spiderwebbed cloak and the hairnet headpiece. Her costume is made up of a lot of beading along the spider webs, along her bodice, along her belt, and her skirt is made of long threads of beads. The outfit was essentially a Frankenstein of a lot of the pins from the board to make something that felt dark and mysterious, but also classic magician's assistant circus sideshow. Her eyes are slightly rolled back and they're a stark glowing white. If this character weren't behind the previously drawn one, I would have added a lot more magical elements floating around her and done more with props and setting and atmosphere, but with the space I had, I just kind of gave her a crystal ball and like some smoke. As for her story and setting, she's definitely a 1920s circus performer. She grew up with this traveling circus, so she's a bit of a jack of all trades and fills in gaps where she's needed. She does everything from pretty assistant to tightrope walker to contortionist to lion tamer, hence the bare feet and performancey costume, so that at any moment she's prepared for her other acts. One of her frequent jobs is working the fortune teller's tent, where she essentially lies to take advantage of customers. What she didn't know was that the spirits that she called on were very, very real and didn't appreciate being used for such nefarious purposes. One day, the spirits decide to take the situation into their own hands and essentially lock her soul into a binding contract. She now has incredible abilities of clairvoyance and speaking with those beyond the veil, but she has essentially no control over those powers. She is tasked by the spirits with using this power and their guidance to essentially Robin Hood it all and take advantage of those with great power and riches to help those without.
Okay, is the spread full? No. As I said, I decided to only do three. I had a fourth and I had an idea in mind, but it was not nearly as fleshed out as the other ones. And it was a board that I really, really, really loved. So I didn't want to waste it on like a half baked character that I wasn't like as excited about. You know what I mean? I wanted to save it. So I, I only went with three because I didn't, I honestly didn't feel like starting fresh with a fourth this late in the game. But of the characters that I did do, I actually really love them. I don't think I disappointed myself like I thought I was going to. This one is probably my least favorite. I think the proportions, these two I use just sketch me and this one I just took a picture of myself and I feel like the proportions are super like wonky. I think I made the skirt like way too long and that throws a lot of it off. Like those legs are messed up, but like character design wise, she's also kind of weak. <laughs> it's fine, like it's fine. I just like didn't, I don't know, it's whatever. Space Cowboy. I'm obsessed, I love him. Hopefully I continue drawing him. I think he's freaking cool. And then Miss Android, I also love and I love the story for. So I, I'm just like feeling really good. I'm feeling very happy. I loved, loved, loved doing this challenge. I know I'm gonna do it again. Um, I had so much fun. Thank you again if you sent in a board. I, that's just the kind of thing that like I wanted to start in place. You guys provided that, you slay. Yeah, this was so fun and cool and I need to do something with this space. I'm thinking maybe I'll write out all of the characters' descriptions and stuff, um, like what their story is a little bit. I, just so I can kind of like keep that in mind because <laughs> um, it's a lot of the challenge is like, that's part of the challenge. So maybe I'll use the, I'll do it for that. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm really tired. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I'm really, really happy. I'm really happy. I had so much fun. I was kind of dreading doing this today just cause I didn't plan on working today and I was like kind of tired. And I just had so much fun doing the kind of art that I want to be doing, that I am enjoying currently. And just like spending time in my sketchbook. It was, I think I, it was needed, you know what I mean? So I had a great time. But yeah, that is it for today. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you haven't already, go check them out. Also check out like my patron and stuff. Love you guys so much. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please like, comment, subscribe, the whole shebang. Go read a book or like a few pages of a book. Go wash your hands and go do some art. Bye. See you next time. See you later.